Hi, it's George here, your local AI specialist from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Today we're going to quantitatively assess the bias of text embedding models. Now text embedding models are the precursor technology to text generation models like ChatGPT. Every time you pass in text to a text generation model, the first step that gets invoked is the text embedding model. Now I'm going to do a quick overview on embedding models and embedding spaces for those of you who really want to learn more about machine learning. If you just clicked on this video based on the title, then skip ahead to 4 minutes 4 seconds to see the results. To understand text embeddings, imagine a space where every possible sentence or word is arranged such that sentences or words that are closely related semantically are positioned close together and sentences or words that are unrelated semantically are positioned further apart. To describe a point in a space, mathematically you would use a vector, and thus in this embedding space you can encode every word or sentence as a vector. Now it's tempting at this point to visualize the structure of language using this embedding space, but it's not that easy. Because unlike the three dimensional space which we're used to, the typical embedding space used for text embeddings have thousands of dimensions. This three dimensional space I've been showing in this diagram is really for indicative purposes only. However, the useful mathematical properties of vectors still work in the same way, and thus we can use vector arithmetic to quantify relationships between words and sentences. Here are some really cool examples to illustrate mathematical analogues of how humans build word associations. You can encode the words man and woman as vectors, and because they are vectors, you can perform vector arithmetic on them. So when you subtract the vector for man from the vector for woman, you get this vector, then you add it to the vector that points to father, the resultant vector will point to a word that's very close to mother. To extend that, you can subtract the vector for man from the vector for father, then add that to the vector for woman, and you get a vector that's pointing to somewhere that's very close to the word mother. It's very unlikely that you'll get a 100% match because words like mother and man can have slightly different meanings based on context. For example, mother could refer to the energy drink or be used in a metaphorical context. And the word man is often used to refer to the whole of humanity. Another way to think about the resultant vector that comes from subtracting man from woman is that the resultant vector feminizes the word that it's been added to. If you're up to date in the world of pop AI, then you already know that text embeddings are a very popular way to build RAG chatbots. A RAG chatbot is simply a search engine in front of a chatbot. However, instead of using a typical keyword based search engine, a semantic based search engine is used. The reason being is that it's unlikely that the block of text containing the answer to the user's query contains the same words as the query itself. But how would you build a semantic based search engine? With text embedding models, it is possible to capture the semantics of each fragment of text from a corpus as vectors, then searching for the most similar or most relevant block of text to the user's query is a matter of finding the vectors from the corpus that is closest to the vector corresponding to the user's query. Now interestingly enough, the way to evaluate linguistic semantic similarity is not by looking at the relevant positions and proximity of the vectors, but by their cosine similarity. So it is the direction that the vector points that matters more than their actual positions. Now let's start the fun part, evaluating the bias of text embedding models. Let's start by evaluating OpenAI's ADA2. Now if you think of the words man, woman, and kitchen, in an unbiased world there's nothing really gendered about kitchen. So the words man and the word woman should really be about equidistant from kitchen. So let's see what OpenAI's ADA2 embedding model thinks. I've made a quick Python script that can compute the embedding vector of any two words and also compute their cosine similarity. And I'm just going to show you that when I put in two of the same word, you should get a value that's very close or equal to one because a cosine similarity of one is 100% match. So the closer to one, the more of a match the two words are. Now let's try at man and kitchen and see what we get. Man and kitchen has a cosine similarity of 0 
and let's try out the cosine similarity for woman and kitchen. Here we go. There's the title of the video. OpenAI thinks women belong in the kitchen. If that's how you interpret the higher cosine similarity. Now let's see if Ada2 has any more career gender biases. So let's try man and doctor. And woman and doctor. So the cosine similarity between woman and doctor is higher than man and doctor. So fun fact, the gender ratio for graduation rates for medical school is actually slightly higher for women. Let's see cosine similarity between man and engineer and woman and engineer. Very interesting. Despite cultural stereotypes, OpenAI's Ada2 thinks that a woman has a stronger cosine similarity to engineer. Let's try another career. And it's higher for woman and lawyer compared to man and lawyer as well. I should have also done this immediately after the kitchen one. Let's try man and chef. Compared to woman and chef. And it's higher for woman and chef compared to man and chef. So maybe the stronger cosine similarity between woman and kitchen has nothing to do with the fact that women belong in the kitchen but more to do with the fact that women have a stronger cosine similarity with chef. Now don't take these cosine similarity results too seriously for now. It will become apparent why later in the video. Now for those of you who catch up with Pop AI news, you'll know that Ada2 is not OpenAI's best text embedding model. OpenAI's state-of-the-art text embedding model is currently text embedding 3 large. Let's test whether this has the same biases as Ada2. Let's try Man and Kitchen. So interestingly enough, Text Embedding 3 Large gives much lower values for cosine similarity. And of course it has the same higher cosine similarity for Woman and Kitchen compared to Man and Kitchen. Now let's test all the career based cosine similarities. So interestingly enough, text embedding 3 large conforms to the social stereotype. Oh, no, that's not what I want. I want woman and doctor. I put them around the different order but the result should be the same. Interestingly, text embedding 3 large keeps the cosine similarity bias for gender and doctor as Ada 2. I wonder if it's aware of the medical school's gender graduation ratios. Let's compare lawyer as well. So no relative change compared to Ada 2 for lawyer. And let's see who makes a better chef. Interestingly, text embedding 3 large thinks that it is man has a higher cosine similarity for chef, which is a different relative result from Ada 2. Now, there's a reason why I told you not to take these cosine similarity scores so seriously just yet. If you were eagle-eyed, you saw me accidentally compare the cosine similarity between man and woman. And You'll remember that it actually had a pretty high score for text embedding 3 large of 0 
This reveals the nature of text embeddings in some ways. We'd consider man and woman to be opposites, but they're obviously very similar, they're both human. And another thing to note is that opposites are actually very close in terms of text embedding. So I'm gonna try wet and dry. You think they're complete opposites, and their cosine similarity is 0.544, which is much higher than the uh, man or woman versus the career words. Because wet and dry refer to the same concepts, despite in our heads them being sort of opposites in their effect. So one thing to watch out for is that if it's been trained a lot of texts that say so-and-so gender is bad at being so-and-so career, that would actually cause the cosine similarity scores to rate higher. And therefore, the cosine similarity score is not indicative of whether that career choice is uh, more popular or more suited to a particular gender. A more accurate method to evaluate career and gender biases in a text embedding model it's probably more accurate to explicitly specify a good career in the comparison sentence. Let's see if we get a different result. And interestingly, we do get a different result. In the previous comparison where we just compared the word doctor against man and woman, woman had a higher cosine similarity to doctor than man. But this time, the relative scores are flipped and it's slightly higher for man. I'm just gonna throw a hypothesis out there and say that if you just compare the gender word and the career word together, a high cosine similarity score simply corresponds to the frequency in which that gender and that career were mentioned in the same context, but does not objectively evaluate whether that career is either good or popular or even bad for that gender. Now I've uploaded the Python script for performing cosine similarities between words to my GitHub, so you can scrutinize my work and make your own comparisons. You might find some interesting results. So thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.